approach. Answer. General Studies Mains Mock Test 1051 2018. 1. The mapping of ocean floor reveals complex and varied features which rival the relief features on land. Discuss the reasons for the formation of main relief features of ocean along with their significance. 150 words approach. Provide a brief introduction about oceanic and continental relief. Discuss the reasons for formation of various oceanic reliefs. Discuss the significance of various oceanic reliefs. Answer. The lithosphere crust and upper mantle has broad relief features, continents and ocean basins, which are created by the movement of plates along plate tectonic boundaries, and consequential volcanic and depositional processes. The relief features of continents may be seen to consist of active mountains, making belts narrow zones along the margins of lithosphere plates, like the Alps and Himalayas and inactive regions of old, stable rock continental shields and mountain roots. The oceans have a more diverse relief than the continents. Much of the oceanic crust is less than 60 million years old, while the great bulk of the continental crust is over 1 billion years old. The floors of the oceans are rugged with the world's largest mountain ranges, deepest trenches and largest plains. It is classified into major and minor relief features, continental shelf, continental slope, oceanic deeps and deep sea plain are major wild hills, sea mounts, neos, trenches and canyons are minor. Formation of main relief features of the ocean and their significance continental margin, it is subdivided into continental shelf and continental slope, with the former simply being a submerged part of the continent. Passive continental margins such as most of the Atlantic coasts have wide and shallow shelves, made of thick sedimentary wedges derived from long erosion of a neighboring continent. Active continental margins have narrow, relatively steep shelves, due to frequent earthquakes that move sediment to the deep sea. Continental shelves are a rich source of petroleum reserves e.g. Bombay High, Persian Gulf. Other resources available in shelves are sulfur, monoxide sand, calcium and pearls. Presence of ample sunlight, optimum depth and nutrients deposited from rivers and waves make them flourishing habitat for organisms. Thus they are potential fishing grounds. Submarine canyons. It is another prominent feature which is cut into a continental slope and usually found near the mouth of rivers. It is formed due to erosion of continental slope by turbidity currents or mass wasting. They act as preferential particle transport routes from coastal zones down continental slopes to deep sea floor, enhance carbon sequestration, provide nursery and refuge sites for marine life and they can also be a rich source of genetic resources and chemical compounds. Deep sea plains. It consists older parts of oceanic crust that are smoother due to sediment deposition. It has deposits from continents of teratinous marine life, biogenol and salts and mineral inorganic. Abyssal plains of southern Indian Ocean and eastern Pacific Ocean are rich sources of polymetallic nodules. Mid-oceanic ridge. These are the youngest portions of the ocean basins where new ocean crust is generated through mantle upwelling and plate divergence. Similarity of constituents. Age and magnetic properties of rocks on either side of the ridge help in understanding sea floor spreading. Water from hydrothermal vents along the mid-ocean ridges is rich in dissolved minerals and supports organisms like chemodatotrophic bacteria. To www.visionis.in copy right vision IAS. Oceanic deeps. These are the deepest parts of ocean basins formed due to subduction of oceanic crust under continental crust. These play a significant role in the study of plate movements. Seamounts slash EOS. These are submarine volcanic cones. Seamounts and the water column above them serve as important habitats, feeding grounds and sites of reproduction for many open ocean and deep sea species. 2. What is inversion of temperature? Discuss the various mechanisms of occurrence of this phenomenon along with its climatic and economic significance. 150 words approach. Explain the concept of temperature inversion. Then discuss various mechanisms of occurrence of this phenomenon. Finally discuss its climatic and economic impacts on locality of its occurrence. Answer. Normally, temperature decreases with increase in altitude, which is called normal lapse rate. However, sometimes the temperature increases with altitude. This phenomenon is called inversion of temperature. Various mechanisms inversion of temperature is generally witnessed during winter season. 
A long winter night with clear skies and still air is ideal situation for temperature inversion. The heat of the day has radiated off during night, and by early morning hours, the earth is cooler than the air above. Over solar areas, temperature inversion is normal throughout the year. The inversion takes place in hills and mountains due to air drainage. Cold air at the hills and mountains, produced during night, flow under the influence of gravity and moves down the slope to pile up deeply in pockets and valley bottoms with warm air above. The frontal inversion occurs when a cold air mass undercuts the warm air mass and lifts it aloft. The front between the two air masses then has warm air above and cold air below. Climatic significance surface inversion promotes stability in the lower layers of the atmosphere due to which smoke and dust particles get collected beneath the inversion layer and spread horizontally causing dense fogs in morning during winters. Inversion of temperature causes frost when the condensation of warm air due to its cooling by cold air below occurs at temperature below freezing points. Inversion of temperature causes atmosphere stability which stops upward and downward movement of air, a condition unfavorable for rainfall. Hills top are warmer during freezing winter. 3 www.visioners.in copy right vision IAs. Economic significant frost caused due to inversion damages crops in foothills, whereas trees and vegetation at top of hills and mountains are not damaged. The valley floors in the hills of Brazil are avoided for coffee cultivation because of frequent frosts. Due to this phenomenon, their pollutants find air pollutants do not disperse in the valley bottom forcing houses and farms in intermountain valleys to relocate along upper slopes. Fog slower visibility affecting traffic movements. Though generally fogs are unfavorable for many agricultural crops such as grams, peas, mustard plants, wheat etc. But sometimes they are also favorable for some crops such as coffee plants in Yemen hills of Arabia where fogs protect coffee plants from direct strong sun's rays. 3. With rapid industrialization, the threat of industrial disasters has increased. Explain the meaning of industrial disaster with adequate examples. Also, highlight the legal and institutional framework to reduce the risk during such events. 150 words approach. First of all, briefly define the concept of industrial disaster along with some examples of major incidents regarding the same. Then highlight the existing legal and institutional framework in place to mitigate the risk during such incidents. Answer. Industrial disaster is a type of disaster originating from technological or industrial accidents, dangerous procedures infrastructural failure or certain human activities that results in loss of life or injury, damage to property, or environmental degradation. One of the worst examples globally was the methyl isocyanate gas leak in 1984 from the Union Carbide factory in Bhopal which had so far claimed more than 20,000 lives and injured several lot persons besides stunning the growth of a generation born from affected population. With rapid industrialization, the cases of industrial disaster have been increasing steadily. From 2003, 2013, 130 significant chemical accidents were reported in India, resulting in 259 deaths and 563 number of serious injuries. Chlorine gas leak in Chashadpur, 2008 mining collapses and most recently, the blast at NTTC Rayburali are some examples of industrial disasters in India. Legal Framework in the pre-Bhopal gas tragedy era, industrial safety was governed by legislations like the Factories Act, 1948 and the Explosives Act, 1884. However, after Bhopal tragedy, India has taken huge leap forward in terms of setting up the legal and institutional framework to reduce the risk. Factories Act 1948 was amended to extend the scope of risk to cover general public in the vicinity of the factory. Environment Protection Act, 1986 was enacted enlisting the provisions for management of hazardous waste. Public Liability Insurance Act in 1991 provides for immediate and interim relief to disaster victims. National Environment Tribunal was set up in 1995 for effective and expeditious disposal of cases arising out of any accident occurring while handling any hazardous substance and to give relief and compensation for damages to persons, property and the environment because of such accidents. Chemical Accidents Rules 1996, Hazardous Wastes Rules 2008 etc. are also aimed at mitigating the effects. Disaster Management Act 2005, 
for effective management of natural and man-made disasters and for incidental matters is the most recent systemic reform. Setting up of National Green Tribunal under the NGI Act 2010, Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act, 2010 etc. further embolden the risk-related legal framework. For www.visionis.in copy right vision IACE. Institutional framework, the number of regulations covering safety in transportation, insurance, liability and compensations provide for institutional framework. It involves various central slash state ministries slash departments for enacting and supervising regulations e.g. MHA, MOF, MOLD, MORT and H, MOH and FW among others. The ministries are responsible for enacting respective regulations and are assisted by their state entities to monitor compliance of the same. For instance, the mole is responsible for enacting regulations and enforcing these through its state entities, the inspectorate of factories slash directorate of industrial safety and health dish monitors compliance of the same. The state governments through their respective departments are responsible for management of certain responsibilities. National Disaster Management Authority National Executive Committee, State Disaster Management Authority, District Disaster Management Authority, National Disaster Response Force and National Institute of Disaster Management have been created under the Disaster Management Act to reduce disaster risk at all its stages. Thus, India has the necessary legal and institutional mechanism to mitigate effects of industrial disasters, but robust enforcement of the same is required. For what are dead zones? Mention the reasons for their formation. Explain, in brief, the impact of such dead zones. 150 words approach. Define dead zones comprehensively. Enlist reasons for their formation. Discuss the impact of these zones. Answer. Dead zones are regions with low oxygen levels hypoxic occurring in water bodies such as lakes and oceans. These are called dead zones because most organisms that require oxygen to live cannot survive in these conditions. Also, the organisms compete with one another for the remaining oxygen and nutrients. Hypoxia generally follows algal blooms. Reasons for formation of dead zones, eutrophication is the main reason for formation of dead water zones. It is the process of enrichment of water body with excess nutrients, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which leads to out of control growth of cyanobacterial algal bloom that edge out of their organisms. It is caused by the following, agricultural runoff from fertilizers, animal manure, etc. Country did wastewater from sewage and industrial activities over fishing that disturbs the marine food web atmospheric nitrogen released by burning of fossil fuels, etc. Population growth and associated activities naturally occur in dead zones are formed because oxygenated water is only found in the upper portion of the sea. Therefore, the lower regions remain oxygen deficient. For example, the largest dead zone in the world, the lower portion of the Black Sea, occurs naturally. Climate change may also contribute to the formation of dead zones as the raised temperature of water bodies reduces solubility of oxygen. Impact of dead zones, loss of marine life and resources, especially the bent thick community large-scale migration of fishes and other free-swimming marine organisms economically. Ecological and livelihood losses for coastal communities human illness e.g. due to shellfish poisoning however, dead zones are reversible requiring all those measures that mitigate or control eutrophication. Collective efforts such as industrial and wastewater controls are needed to stem its spread. 5. www.visionis.in copy right vision IACE 5. Stating the differences between deltas and alluvial fans Highlight the factors responsible for their formation. Also, briefly bring out the economic importance of these two depositional landform types. 150 words tend approach. First of all, briefly explain the concepts of alluvial fans and deltas, bringing out basic differences between them. Enumerate various factors responsible for their formation. Then mention the economic significance of these two types of landforms. Answer. Both deltas and alluvial fans are types of depositional landforms formed by flowing rivers. Alluvial fans are formed at foothills where streams flowing from higher level break into foot slope plains of low gradient whereas deltas are formed near mouth of streams where it meets seas or stagnant water bodies. The two landforms also differ in terms of characteristics of their deposits. 
Alluvial sands are generally composed of coarse sediments which are not distinguishingly stratified whereas deltas are generally formed by fine deposits. Factors responsible for formation of alluvial sands. Stream is flowing from higher elevation with steep gradient for greater sediment carrying capacity. Path of the stream is easily erodible. Further, shape of alluvial sands depends on the climate such as in humid areas they show normally low cones with gentle slope from head to toe while in arid and semi-arid climate. They appear as high cones with steep slopes. Factors responsible for formation of deltas. Load carrying capacity of rivers. If the load is not carried far into the sea, it spreads and accumulates as a low-lying cone forming deltas. Composition of sediments carried by rivers. Coarser material settles and finer fraction like silt and 